now let's go where you were bringing us earlier in, in the talk, which is how you and I met. So mm-hmm. we, we met about, I guess, two, maybe three years ago. You're right. And, um, and you reached out to me to ask if I'd, I'd coach you. And can you please tell us what was going on at the time? What was, you know, where, where, what was the state that Clearbit was in? How many people, maybe even revenue mm-hmm. and sort of effectiveness in the organization? What wasn't working? And why is it that you reached out to me? So a lot of things were working. We were about 20 people, I, I think. And we were profitable and, and having a lot of fun. And, it, you know, it was, it was honestly pretty great. And I had this early team that I'd found half through chance and serendipity. And this early team became the leadership team of the company. And actually they're still at the company five years later today, which is pretty rare. And so I, so this team was amazing because I could be vulnerable in front of them. But prior to this, I felt like I had to be the stoic founder with all the answers, just giving directions and, now I had this group of people who I could start being vulnerable in front of and talk about fear and sadness and things and, and, and really grow. So setting up that environment was, was the key thing because you need, you need this feedback loop. You need this group of people that you can be vulnerable with, that they can be vulnerable with you and that you're really okay with giving each other feedback. You, it's like you, you seek it out and i think you really showed me the value of feedback but i had a a little idea of it back then and so i remember sitting down with uh coo at the time luke and he he he's saying to me alex man i really think you need a coach and i'm thinking this what are you talking about like why, why do I need a coach? This company is doing very well. Surely I don't need a coach because, <laughs> you know, the proof is in the pudding. And, and I kind of felt like, you know, it was like therapy. You know, you only do therapy if you're, if you're sad. And, uh, and I, I felt it was like that. But, you know, after sitting on it for a few days, I was like, okay, fine. I'll uh, go out and find a coach. And uh, I just got so lucky. I, I mean, my story is just luck the whole way, you know, throughout my career. And, and this is no exception. I just went to a, a party that Naval was at, Naval Ravikant, the co-founder of AngelList. And I told him my predicament and he was like, I've got just the guy, Matt Mashari. And, uh, and, then, I, and then I got introduced to you and the rest is history. Right on. Awesome. Okay. So let me tell you from my side what happened. Cause at, at that point I, I meet you. And, um, and I remember I was starting to work um, with Brian Armstrong and Coinbase at the time. And I thought I was going to be spending a lot of time at Coinbase and was probably going to start in about a month or two. Mm-hmm. So I think I said to you, and, and as, as I looked and I had previous to that coached uh, Bolt and AngelList and done like a really involved thing like a Bill Campbell style, I go in there, spend one, two days a week at the company, basically running as if I'm the CEO, mm-hmm. running, you know, set all the one-on-ones of the exec team in one day, team meeting at the end of the day, I'm running them all. The, uh, you know, Ryan Breslow Bolt sitting next to me when I did it at Bolt, Naval sitting next to me when I did it at AngelList and actually Kevin Laws, who was the one who took over Naval's role. And, um, and so I thought that's what you needed and but I was like, oh my God, like we, we don't have time to finish this because that probably takes two full months. So I said to you, Alex, I can do this. We're going to have to go incredibly fast. And there also, I needed to build up uh, trust with you. And I usually did that over four meetings. So I said, Alex, we're going to have these, instead of once a week, we're going to have them every day. And then after that, if it works, we're going to jump right in. and I'm going to play this one day a week CEO role. And uh, I think, and I remember that's what we did. And then you yep. sort of set me up for and the four days worked and you liked it. And then, you know, day five, you said, okay, we're going to set all the one-on-ones for the exec team in one day. I think we chose a Wednesday and, uh, and then the team meeting at the end. And that was a big, long freaking day. And we ended up doing that for about four weeks to sort of implement my sort of method. And then another four weeks for the results to start to show. And then another four weeks to sort of transition 
the whole process over to you. So you're running. So I think I was there 12 weeks. Is, is that sort of what yeah, you Yeah, that is how I remember it. And the, the one thing I would add is that prior to meeting you, Naval had sent over this book that you'd written. And I, I think it was, it was just Google Doc at the time. And so he was like, read this Google Doc. And if you like it, I'll introduce you to Matt. And so I, I read this and it basically includes your entire strategy for building a company. It's like the, the founder's ultimate guide to building a company. And so I already had a lot of trust. I, you know, you were talking about things in the book that I had to learn very painfully for myself. So I was like, if, if I learned that and I know that to be true, then the rest of the book has got to be good as well. So so there was that. So yeah, it, it was it was amazing, and, and we added this structure about twenty five people at that, at that stage. And I actually think that is the right stage to to start adding this kind of thing. I agree, because I think a company has sort of two parts to it, and unfortunately, they're they're both based on how many people you have. So first, it's you create product market fit, and for that, hopefully, you have as few people as possible. But once you create product market fit, then all of a sudden, you know, you want to ramp sales and that takes salespeople. And then you want to ramp features and that takes engineers. And then you want to support your customers and that takes customer support. And those are all humans. And so all of a sudden I've noticed that up until about 25, um, it's probably like 20 to 30, but 25 is right in the middle there, that you don't really need a management process because there are few enough people, especially if you're all in the same location, that people, you can hear what people are saying and they can hear what you're saying. So they grok what your priorities are. You grok what obstacles they're encountering. But as soon as you go over that 25 mark, and certainly once you start having remote folks, then people aren't overhearing your conversations. You're not overhearing theirs. So they don't know exactly what the, what's in your head and you don't know what's in their head. And unless you have a system that pulls information of the priorities of the company from your head out to the company, and pulls the problems that they're encountering from the company up to you, real problems start to get created. And you basically can hire better and better people and they just won't perform because they don't know what the hell they're supposed to do. And when they encounter problems, they can't get them solved because there's no, there's no yeah. support from the, from the center. Exactly. So I, so I agree with you. That is the right time to implement a system, but there is a cost to it as you discovered. So this cost is like you have to have a full freaking day of meetings. It could be once a week or once every two weeks. And that's like, well, it's once a week. That's a 20% overhead that you didn't need prior. And that's mm -hmm. a big cost. And a lot of people don't want to pay that cost. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, is it's only a one-time payment. Mm -hmm. So whether you're 25 and then you go to 250 and then you go to 2,500 and then you go to 25,000, it's still just 20% overhead. So yeah. learning, learning how to do it right at the 25 employee mark is usually the right time. But I'll tell you, oddly, I now no longer coach folks when they're at 25. I like to wait till longer. And here's why. I like for them to really feel the pain. Yeah. At like 100, 150, 200. It's like, oh my God, it's just, it isn't working at all. Because I need for them to implement the things I'm sharing with them and they'll only do it if they're really feeling pain. Because yeah. a lot of the things are anti-intuitive. Yeah, yeah and it, that's right. And a lot of your uh, proposals, uh, let's just say they're, they're a little tricky on the surface. Like giving feedback, for example, that is not something that comes naturally to people. And if left to their own devices, people will just avoid it. Yeah. And... So it's much better getting those habits in the earlier as, as possible, but it is a kind of unnatural act and you definitely need a CEO who is highly supportive of this and is willing to spend that extra 20% time and spend that extra emotional energy uh, setting up the feedback system uh, because they're, you know, they're paying down this debt in the long term. They're, uh, they're kind of investing in the future. Right. Well, let's get into specifics. So I can rattle off some of the things that I remember us doing. Maybe I'll start there. And then, but more importantly, I want to hear from your side, A, what the result of all this, so the, the time that I was there, and then what pieces were particularly valuable to you? And then how did they help the company? How did they help you? 
But then also, maybe even more importantly, what pieces didn't work? And so let me run down what I remember, and you can fill in the blanks of things that maybe I don't mention the things that were important to you. Yep. So first is you and I had these one-on-ones. And so we, we put them in a structure, and I'm going to share all this content so people know exactly what we did. Um, and I basically said to you, after the fourth meeting, if you feel more empowered, more engaged, more successful, then you know, because I'm going to be treating you like my report. And it, you'll know, therefore, that my system works. And if it does, you know, it's all there and written. You can just copy and paste it and start using it with your direct reports. Mm-hmm. So we did that. That worked. The next thing we did, I, I remember there was a conflict that was going on with one of your, one of your team members, your mm-hmm. core team member. Mm-hmm. And if I remember right, he was sort of like on the brink of like, uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm out of here. And so we, we jumped on that and we basically did conflict resolution. And in one set down, I think it was like less than an hour, you guys stood up and started hugging each other and, and basically all was resolved and he was excited to stay. And, and it's still at the company today. Yep, still at the company today. And I, I think you were like, oh my God, Matt, what the hell did you just do? Yeah, I, yeah, that was. Oh, that definitely won some trust. <laughs> you have you have a magical ability for conflict resolutions. <laughs> right on. And then the third thing was, then we sort of put in this. Now I'm going to do the one on ones with all the exec team. Do the team meeting, and, mm-hmm. and there was a structure to the team meeting, which is a lot's going to happen in writing before the meeting, and we're going to read as opposed to everyone giving verbal updates. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be a structure for how we resolve issues. Mm-hmm. There's people going to propose it here's the problem, here's Mm -hmm. what I did to create it, and here's my proposed solution. And then if everyone agrees on proposed solution, great, we just go. And if not, there's a discussion and then a decision made, but a clear decision maker. And Mm -hmm. then the third part is at the end, and this is the part, as you mentioned, that is tough and people don't necessarily want to do, but I always force it, is to give feedback. Have everyone give feedback to you, but also we did peer feedback in each of those team meetings, which is very rarely gets done in a company. Yeah. And then, and then after that, we said, okay, now we're also going to create a tool or use a tool so that every agreement that we make is going to be tracked and we can all see it. And oh, by the way, we can all see what everyone else is doing. So each person is going to say, in this coming week, these are the three most important things that I'm going to get done. And because these are the three key actions towards my OKRs. And then the next week, we'll see whether or not they did those three. And so each person could have transparent look into the progress that each of their peers was making. And I could see, holy crap, you know, yeah. all of my peers are doing, are getting done the most important things that they needed to. Wow. I am super excited to be part of this team. I want to get them done too. So like, it's almost like a morale booster. That wasn't so critical for you because you guys were already so bonded that you knew what was going on. I think the issue for you was getting it that same yeah. trust beyond, yeah. beyond yeah. the leadership team. Yeah. And, and- people watching this this may seem like a lot and it is that's why it's a book uh so if you if you if you if you're having trouble following along just go on amazon type the great ceo within and just read matt's book because it's got all of this stuff in it 